Today, I'm going to break down the exact system that I used to study for exams in medical school, and the system happened to help me graduate with a 3.9 GPA, so hopefully you find some success with it as well. And we'll be covering a lot in today's video, and it doesn't hurt my feelings if you jump around, so feel free to check out the bookmarks down below, as well as the timestamps that I'll attach right here. What will hurt my feelings is if you forget to hit that like button if you found some value from this video, so don't forget to... But let's get into it. So today's episode, I'm going to break down the entire process that I use to study for exams in four different phases. Phase one is going to be your test playbook and schedule. So it's essentially your plan of what you'll be doing up until exam day. Phase two is arguably the most important. This is your content matrix. This is essentially what study strategy or strategies you'll combine to help you get through all of that content before test day. I'll give you a few of my favorite personal examples that I just loved using. Phase three is arguably my favorite, the anxiety to confidence system. Essentially what you do from now until test day to make sure that you go into to test day with confidence and without that overburdened anxiety. And then finally, phase four is the mental game. We'll talk about systems and processes that you can include into your prep to make sure that you go into test day with confidence and don't get in your own way. So let's get into our first phase, which is our test playbook and schedule. This is going to be the most important phase if you're somebody who tends to struggle with staying on a schedule or having a schedule to even begin with, especially if you have multiple exams around the same time. So in this phase, I'm gonna put you into my shoes exactly what I would do on when I start studying, how many lectures I plan on doing per day, and then actually assigning them to the specific days. So let's get into it. So for this phase, we're gonna use an example where you're studying for final exams or you have tons of exams kind of within a seven to ten days period so December is a natural time for students to have exams in medical school and all other disciplines so in this example we have an anatomy exam on Tuesday we have one on this Friday and then the 12th and the making of this video we are basically about a month away from this physiology exam and so the first thing that I do is to come up with a rule on when I want to start studying. As important as it is to have your calendar actually have the date of the test, it's also important to have when you want to start reviewing for that test or quiz in itself. This also just gets in your mind into saying, hey, you're already two or three days behind and haven't even started studying for this exam, make sure you stay on schedule. My simple rule for every exam is that if it's just a normal exam for your courses, then 10 days. If it's a final exam, then I like to give myself two to three weeks. And I put it into my calendar. So for example, if we were looking at this physiology exam, then I could just say right here, start studying for physio. And that just tells me that once the 28th comes around, if I haven't, I need to make sure that I go ahead and start studying. And I can do this for all of the remaining exam. And once we have this done, you can move to the next step or you can do what I like to do, which is saying, how practical is this in the first place? So for example, studying for this biochem and then the physiology exam is tough, especially when there's only two days left. And there's a good chance I may fall behind and have a terrible weekend studying for this physio exam. So instead, what I can do is I can say, maybe I wanna go ahead and start studying for my biochem exam a little bit early, gives myself more time to include more physio later on. And so both of those classes are PEF4. Once you have this, now you can start going into step two, which is accounting for roughly how many lectures you'll be doing per day for that specific exam. Now that I have my rough review days in order, I can just go based off of each exam, or you can just do this for one exam at a time, and look into how many material, whether it be lectures, labs, TBLs, class material, reading material, is going to be testable. And you wanna look at each of them as individual things if they are going to require separate amounts of attention. So for example, for anatomy, I have 10 to five labs. For the biochem final, I may have 30 lectures. Maybe it's just a midterm and a final for this class. And physio, I'm gonna have 25 lectures. So I wanna know roughly how many lectures I need to do per day. Now, easily, the easiest way I used to do this is I would just go into Google, and if it was something I was gonna start for today, because let's be honest, very few of us were ever proactive in prepping for our exams, then I would say, well, let's see, for example, how long I have to study for my anatomy exam, which I wanna to start today. So between now and December 6th, I have 14 days. Now here's the caveat that we teach all of our students that we work with in our coaching programs is that yes, you have 14 days, but you don't wanna give yourself 14 days to study for this exam because if you fall behind, there's no buffer. You wanna use that day before an exam to really catch up or more importantly, do some extra review to make sure that you're ready for the exam the following day. So I always cut down that number by at least one and if you're somebody who needs a little bit more of a buffer, then you can cut it down by two. So if we had 14 days, then I'm actually going to cut down to 13 days and then come up with a rough amount of lectures. So if I have 10 lectures and five labs that are fair game for this exam, that means 15 pieces of material over a span of 13 days is about one lecture per day. If you're studying for finals or multiple quizzes, then you can go ahead and do this for all of your classes at once. So you can kind of see the practicality of it. So for example, for biochem, between the date that we had assigned, you can use one of these calculators where you just plug in the date 
and then the test day that you want or the day before the exam. Um, and then you can say, okay, how many days are in between? So in between the biochem exam, I have 16 days. For the physiology exam, I've given myself 14 days. And so again, it comes out to a rough number where you subtract one from your total, so from 16 to 15, and then say, I wanna do roughly two lectures per day over the span of 15 days. I'll still have a buffer before the day of the exam and overall be good. And same thing for the physiology exam. Now, when we work with coaching students one-on-one, -on -one, this step is probably the most enlightening because if you come up with a number that's like five lectures per day and then you have to do an extra lab hour lecture for anatomy and extra two labs here, you know it's not practical. You know you're gonna have to make some adjustments somewhere. We talk about where you could do that. But if you come up with a number where it's like, you know what, every single day I just need to do one anatomy class, I need to do maybe two pieces of material um, for biochem, and I'm not even gonna start studying for physiology until an extra week, um, but I need to do two, then it's much more doable. So now we get into step three of this specific phase, and I promise you guys this will be a very detailed video, but hopefully you guys are enjoying it. Again, hit that like button if you are. But now we get to plug in our actual material into our daily schedule. So let's go into our week. And for the simplicity of the video, I'm gonna assume that you're not gonna start studying for your finals until after five or 6 p.m. This way, if you're still going to class, if you're having new material presented to you, you still have that bit of the day um, from this morning to the evening to go ahead and actually study and review that content. But later in the evening would be dedicated time for you to do your review. And you can plug this however you'd like. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna do 5 p.m. is when we're gonna start studying. And so since today is supposed to be the day that I start studying for my anatomy exam, I'm gonna say, okay, I've done this planning, I should be done in 30 minutes. Let's go ahead and study for that first lecture over this next hour and a half. So I can say lecture one, anatomy final. And this way I already know that that's when that lecture will be. And I can go ahead and plan out the rest of anatomy first before I move on to the next thing. So this is just an example of what my schedule would look like once I kind of finished it off. So the first thing I always like to do is just give a numerical number to which duration of the content I'm on. So as we talked about, there's 15 pieces of fair content for this anatomy final. So I'm just gonna give one, two, three, and I can choose to do this however I want. So if I wanna do a lecture one day, the lab the next, I could do that, especially if they're related, that makes sense. Um, but here I'm giving myself about an hour, hour and 15, depending on how long that content may be. So if I remember that a lab was really extensive, I may give that extra bit of time. If I remember a lecture was really heavy, I may make that one and a half to two hours. Um, the next step is that we're gonna be doing is on the weekends, you may be studying for your normal classes, other final exams. And so I just try to demarcate where a specific class is going to be dedicated. So in the green is all my available time and I can move or stretch this depending on practicality for anatomy. And then within those times, I can say, okay, the weekends, and this is how you catch up if you have an obscene amount of average lectures you need to do per day, you can do more per um, lectures on the weekend to make your average go higher. So while you may be doing one or two lectures on the weekdays, you can say I could possibly fit in three lectures on the Sunday morning or Saturday morning. And then when I go to the duration of my week, I can do the same. Um, so here we're kind of looking on uh, Sunday and I'd be making that anatomy time and I can do two lectures or two labs in this case that are a little bit more heavier. And then as we go through the week, you know, as I get closer and closer to test day and I'm getting more comfortable and in the flow with my material, I may decide to, you know, start to go ahead and front load um, my schedule to make sure that I'm getting through those lectures. So on some days that I feel that I'm more available and my focus is completely towards final exams, I'm gonna start including maybe one or two lectures a little bit above my average because the main priority for you personally is to get through as many repetitions as possible. The first repetition is the most important because that's the repetition that most students don't get to. This is why cramming happens. So if you can make sure that you get through all of your lectures by the day before the exam, you're good. But I always like to, for personal reasons, love to do everything twice. And so for that reason, I wanna make sure that I have that buffer day plus maybe one or two days additionally where I can go through all the material again. And so for doing that, um, we get through our 15th lecture um, on Thursday. And remember our test for reference is going to be on this Tuesday. So I still have about four to five days. 
And now I'm going to go through everything the second time around, whatever, whatever study strategy I'm using, which we'll talk about later in the phases. And now because I've covered the lectures ideally once, as well as when I was studying for the quizzes and tests that I've taken in the past, that material should be easier to schedule in, and thus I should be able to get through them faster. So I may be able to go through three lectures in the time that normally it would take me, you know, uh, an extra hour or two um, doing it better the second time. And so now I can see that I've gone through all the material um, twice and I still have this buffer day. So if I fall behind, if another class takes priority, I can easily move these individual assignments and appointments with myself to another day, the day before the exam. If I don't have to use this day for any of this, then I can simply go through each of my lectures either once more, I can do practice questions, other resources, but I have an extra day to just breathe, as well as study for my upcoming finals and other exams and other classes. Now, once you do this for one class, you can go ahead and do this for your consecutive exams. So let's quickly go through that. So now that we've added all of our classes, we can actually see the practicality of how this would work. So for example, on our first day of studying for our anatomy exam, we're gonna go through lecture one. My goal is tomorrow to start lab one. And because now today's my first day of studying for biochem, I also wanna go ahead and try to get through lecture one or two, and then try to do maybe two lectures of biochem per day per my average. Now, when you do this, you'll be able to see how practical something is because it's visibly available. You can see on some days that it may be difficult to study for anatomy, biochem, and physiology at once, but technically, when we looked at my averages, I was actually supposed to do two lectures for physiology in this day. Now, the likelihood that I'm gonna study from five to 11 and not spend any other time on my other classes or other activities and obligations is very unlikely. And so when I do this, and when I was creating the schedule, I can say, okay, well, technically I'm supposed to start studying for physiology today. Let's go ahead and under promise how I'm gonna, much I'm gonna get done while I'm studying for those other two classes and then overbook myself on the weekends for physiology time or biochem time, so that way I can still catch up. So you can see that technically, while in the physiology class, I was supposed to do two lectures, there are some days where I didn't even assign myself any, and that's because I'm planning on things going haywire. I'm planning on either procrastinating or getting to behind on other lectures and other classes that I don't wanna have anything else that I'm further behind on. And if I'm still behind on Thursday where I don't even get to this lecture, then I can just move things around accordingly. Again, I'm also giving myself Friday to either recover or to catch up on lectures that I'm behind on. But I can only do this practically if I have all of my exams, all of my lectures plugged in. This is why it's a playbook. You know what your options are and how you can do those. And it's also helpful because now you can try to see where you can physically include a second pass if that's your goal. It was mine, it helped a lot. Um, and it's also going to be conducive to what study system you're using, which we'll get into the next phase. But I can see, for example, when I'm studying for anatomy that it's practical to go ahead and try to get through my second pass of the material over these last few days where I start with lecture one on the Thursday before, and then I just do a little bit while still giving myself time to study for the other classes. But when it's the day before my anatomy exam, that's going to be the time that I'll be using to do minimal work for the other classes and pretty much reviewing for anatomy or playing catch up. So if I wasn't able to get to these lectures, I'm creating a time where I can still do those and my schedule won't get screwed up. Same thing for my biochem exam. If I know it's gonna be on Friday, remember that Thursday is a buffer day, I haven't assigned myself any physiology time there. And that's because if I'm behind here, I can move it to this time and the entire day is available. Um, so you can always go ahead and front load or back load depending on how practical things are. But you do have to create a calendar like this because now I can show up and go into phase two saying, what study strategy will I use? Which ones work the best? And how can I get through at least two passes of the material practically? This is a nice way of making personal appointments with yourself for an exam. Because if you're cramming, that means you either never created a schedule in the first place or didn't commit to one that you actually had. And yes, you may not be able to show up for all of these lectures and things will have to get moved around, but now you can visually see where things are actually doable. Now let's go ahead and get into the second phase, which is your content matrix. This is the core study strategy or one or two strategies that you'll combine to do the majority of your studying for those classes. I'm gonna show you two of my favorites that a lot of our one-on-one -on -one coaching students really enjoy, 
And then we'll talk about one more strategy you can do in phase three that combines everything and you really have a foolproof system. Now, my personal favorite study strategy to study for really any class in medical school was to use Anki. Now, if you guys are brand new to Anki, there is an entire video are by far our most popular video here on the YouTube channel that breaks down the A to Z on how to use Anki for beginners, all the way to advanced techniques that I used. So I'm not gonna go into the big nitty gritty details. I will link that below that video in case you're interested in watching. It's relatively quick and lots of people have found it very helpful. So again, just go ahead and check that out down below. But Anki is basically a very smart flashcard system. It will not only make your flashcards relatively easy, but it'll also say, you know what, you suck at this topic, but you're a little bit better at this one. I'm gonna show you that sucky topic more often, um, just using spaced repetition. You can imagine if you're studying for a final exam of seeing your weak topics more often than your strengths is going to make you do wonders. And so essentially the Anki method for a final exam is you can have any class. For example, here we have a few, but let's say I had a cardiology block upcoming. And so you have your individual lectures. So if I wanted to create another lecture, we can call this lecture four and let's call this CHF for heart failure. And I'm gonna go ahead and then you can just drag your individual lectures underneath the entire block. So this could be cardiology block four, cardiology final exam, whatever you may be, and just move all the individual lectures that are responsible for them underneath. And as I'm going through the semester and as I'm going through the classes, I'm making individual flashcards. So just to show you kind of what they may look like, you can go ahead and click study now. And now we use something here called the screenshot method or image occlusions. You may get a flashcard that looks like this, like an image occlusion or a screenshot of the slides where you got it from and you're just quizzing yourself on do I know this or not. Again, if you wanna see that entire tutorial on how to use Anki, I will link that down below. But if I did this for every single class, for every slide and all the material in addition that came with all the review slides, all of the labs and I made specific decks for them, then I can go into my schedule and say, okay, today you're supposed to do lecture one and two for your cardiology block. And I can just do the flashcards there. I can go into my individual deck. Anki gives you the ability to not only do their algorithm of how many cards you need to do that day, but I can actually just go ahead and go into a cram mode where I can just say, I wanna do all the cards in this deck in a random order, and I'm just gonna go ahead and get started. And then when you do this, it will show you all of the flashcards that are available, and you can just do them in one go. And now I'll go ahead and do that for lecture one and then lecture two. This is the simple method of just going down to the individual lectures. Now, when I was studying for final exams, I wanted to have a little bit more control. So what I would do is I would just create an extra deck and call this my reviewed deck, and you can call this cards. And I would put this underneath my cardiology block. Because you can imagine if I had 30 lectures, I don't want to see all 30 at once. But let's say I've now reviewed lecture one and lecture two. And I only want to see the lectures that I haven't reviewed. Or in a similar way, if I thought a lecture was difficult, then I could move it under a week topics if I wanted to come back to it more often. But the beauty of this is that let's say now every morning I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to spend 10 minutes or 15 minutes on the elliptical. I can easily say, let's just do all the flashcards in this reviewed um, deck cards section. That means I see all the lectures I've already reviewed once for my final exam. And I'm just gonna do it over 10 minutes while I'm on the elliptical without any pressure, but I'm just seeing all those topics naturally. Um, so if I've already covered 10 lectures over the span of a week and a half, I'm gonna be able to see 10 lectures worth of stuff. But if I haven't covered a specific lecture, then it's not going to be in that review deck. This is a nice way of naturally getting a second pass, especially if you're finding when you're creating your calendar that you're not able to actually get a second pass plugged in. This is a nice way of using Anki to say, you know what, naturally show me um, my flashcards a second time around. And you can schedule a 10 minute session, a 30 minute session every morning or practically into your schedule to do this. And if you just did this by itself, you've gone through all the lectures once, you ideally will be able to see all the flashcards on a daily basis. And then if you have a second pass, even more power to you. This system by itself helped me ace my exams without making my study feel monotonous. Now, when we add one more thing from phase three, you can see the power of what can happen to study for the final. And when you combine this with one more study strategy that we'll talk about in phase three, then the amount of retention that you have going into the exam increases, and most importantly, the amount of confidence that you have going into the test increases exponentially. Now, the second method that we love to recommend to a lot of our students is some kind of table database. Now, one thing that I love using is Notion because my entire business, my entire life is plugged into there. Um, speaking of, if you guys are interested in having an entire database for your medical school journey, then we will be sharing that with all of our followers um, in the next week as the making of this video. So the goal is by the time that you have access to this, you'll actually have access to this entire database where you can schedule your entire life, but also your studying, as well as have an entire roadmap of tips for your medical school journey, including studying. 
um, but also our notion method. But really what the notion method is, is essentially creating questions and answers from your entire material. Every time you go through a slide, each slide is a potential of possible questions that could come from it based off of the material that's there, plus the additional information the lecture adds, right? So if I'm listening to a lecture, let's say we're on lecture three of cardiology, I can write my questions and answers in the specific format. I can say, you know, for example, what's the workup for AFib? And then I can write, you want to get an EKG for your AFib. I can have all my answers in one section, my questions in another, and I can essentially quiz myself doing this. You can do this with an Excel sheet. You can do this on an actual piece of paper. But when I'm going through Notion, I'm essentially using a flashcard system without forcing myself to use Anki because there's now a lot of cool things that I can do. Because Notion is a table, you can sort it however I want. So. If I want to go ahead and say, okay, let's go ahead and make sure you mark all the lectures that you've passed once and passed two. And if I want to feel super confident going into the test, I can say, I want to go ahead and hit my pretest confidence button for every topic I feel good about before the day of the exam. And if all of these are clicked, then I feel pretty good going for that cardiology exam. Uh, in addition, if I want to go ahead and give things of difficulty, I could. I would say, hey, this is going to be a two, it's going to go further down. But if this is going to be, let's say, a five, if I change this one to a five, it's purposely, at least the way this database is set, it's going to rank things based off of difficult to easy. So when I'm coming for my second passes, or if I'm going to do a 30 minute daily session of going through my hardest topics from all the lectures I review, just like we talked about with Anki, I want to see my toughest topics first, because I want to make sure that I don't get slipped up on the day of the exam by all these hard things. The easy things I'm gonna come back to, and if sometimes an easy thing may actually become hard later, and that's fine, you can change the score. And now when I come for my next session in the mornings to do 10 minutes of Notion review, I can say, let's do the top 10 questions that I had. And if the difficulty improves, maybe this five goes to a three, now it's gonna go further down my list. And if I've done the first pass, I'm gonna do it. If I've done my second pass, I can click it. And then I can do a lot of things with Notion, such as don't show me any more topics that have already been covered twice or I feel like I'm confident before the test. So now you have a growing database of everything you need to learn, and ideally you now you can filter out all the things that you haven't covered the first or the second time or feel confident going into exam. So Notion or any type of database system is super helpful for anyone who wants to have a big visualization, big collection of everything. And so for our personal students who don't like using Anki, Notion ends up being one of the most popular choices. If you guys are interested in having a template to this database, it'll actually be as part of that Notion Medical School template um, and dashboard that we will be including as part of the Medical School Domination Bundle. So if you guys are interested, that'll be linked down below. It should be live by the time that this video goes out. Now those are just two styles and methods that I personally use when studying for exam. And it doesn't hurt my feelings if you say those are all crap, I'd prefer to do X, Y, and Z. That is completely okay. The most important part of your system is that it needs to be simple so that you can just go into the studying. If your daily schedule has two lectures for biochem, then the goal is to actually review those two lectures and not spend an absorbent amount of time making outlines or doing a lot of work and then intending to review them. So if you're somebody who is going to spend a lot of pre-work to actually do something to review, that doesn't count as your study method. So whether you're making flashcards, you're reviewing things, doing it on a whiteboard, actual reviewing is when you're going through the content and testing yourself in one form fashion. Now the second part of this phase is something that we've kind of naturally already included in the examples of both Anki and to Notion. While you still wanna get two passes, ideally of your material and definitely the minimum of one, of just having what we call a feed-in loop. This basically means how you can naturally have information be presented to you on a daily basis after you've covered them. And just like we did with our Notion example, you can just say, I'm gonna do the next 10 topics that are on my list and try to change their difficulty. I'm gonna do this for 10 to 20 minutes every single morning before I go to school. You can do this with whatever system you have. And you can use this feed-in loop for pretty much any study strategy. As an example, maybe you're using physical notes, so if you have a notebook. After you've done your first review of a few lectures, you can say, I'm gonna go back for 10 minutes every single morning, and I'm just gonna to try to do as much of review of those pages that I've gone through already and do as many as I can over the next 10 minutes. Maybe that means having a demarcation as you're going through your notes saying, anything that's starred is something you have difficulty with. Let's go through the star topics. If the star topic is still hard, I'm gonna keep it as a star. If it's something that is easy, I'm gonna make it a check mark. There's so much you can do, but you're just naturally feeding in old material that has been reviewed at least once and just doing it on a daily basis. Having this plus a system where you have the first and second pass scheduled in to your daily calendar is really all you need to make sure that not only do you show up, but that material is constantly going to get hit throughout those two or one week that you have before your final. Now phase three, again, is my personal favorite, which is your anxiety to confidence system. This probably is the biggest reason of why I can go into a test and my peers who've studied just the same amount, but we would go in with a completely different mindset. 
And often you can make the difference between a B and A for just being more confident or at least being more calm. And once again, this happens to be my personal favorite. The reason is, is when I was in medical school, I'd find that the reason I could make an A where a classmate who worked much harder than I did make a B or a C, it's not because I was smarter than them, often that was actually the opposite. And so I can go into a test, a final or a quiz with much more confidence and prevent myself from getting in my own way. Everyone knows the experience of having anxieties make you feel terrible about one hard question, and then it leads you to make multiple mistakes and exam questions that you could have easily answered if you had a level head. So here are three different things you can do. Number one is to have a lecture hit list. This basically means that you wanna have a bullet point of all your learning objectives and all of the major topics, relationships, tables, and just formulas that each lecture is expected you to master. If instead of having a multiple choice exam, imagine if the professor said, you need to teach this lecture by the time your final comes around. To be able to teach it, you're essentially gonna either come up with a mental or physical list of everything that that lecture had to be fair game. The same thing goes to prepare for an exam or a final in the same fashion. Now, two of the systems that we had talked about, being both Anki and Notion, naturally do this. Your flashcards are essentially a big hit list of everything that lecture covered. Your Notion database is ideally a big hit list of all the questions that could have came from the slides. But now if you're making, for example, physical notes, you can essentially have a Word doc of all of the topics that come from that specific lecture and just have a big list of them. Maybe your personal strategy doesn't naturally include a hit list that's built into it. That's completely fine. You can create it in conjunction. So again, going back to that example of having a physical notebook, you can have a Word doc of having a bullet point. This is like your master list of everything you wanna master. So lecture one has all my learning objectives, plus everything that I'm just going by the notebook and saying, oh, okay, this formula, I need to make sure I master. I need to know the relationships between these two different things. And I'm just making a big list of everything that I wanna have perfected for that specific lecture. I'm gonna do this for every single one. Now, the purpose behind this is as I'm going through my first pass and definitely afterwards, I wanna look at that hit list and saying, how much of this do I feel confident if the test was on this lecture tomorrow? Because when you do this, if you have a list of 30 topics, you may find that 20 of them you feel pretty good about, maybe five of them, eh, and then five of them you are absolutely terrified will show up to the exam. That tells you that the next time you're gonna review that lecture, if you're gonna do a second review, or the next time you do a 10 minute session in the morning, you wanna start with those topics in mind first by watching a video on YouTube, going to an outside resource, re-watching your lectures, going through your slides, whatever it may be, but you're filling in those gaps. This is how you go from anxiety to confidence, by visually being able to see, this is everything that I need to know for this lecture, and here is where I would get tripped up. So let's make sure we have a game plan to overcome that. Tip number two is a study strategy that I've loved using. I've used this since college and a lot of our veteran followers here at the MD Journey know about the brain dump. But the brain dump is basically essentially taking any piece of paper. So here is my moving receipt that I have here. We're just gonna flip it over. Didn't even see the price of that. And essentially you wanna just verbally and mentally regurgitate everything for a lecture on a piece of paper. And the way this works is imagine I did my Anki cards or I did my flashcards on a lecture. I can see everything that I wanted to learn and have mastered. Now I'm gonna say, okay, Lux, take five minutes and go ahead and try to recreate all the things and all the flashcards you saw and try to do it in something that makes sense. It doesn't have to be readable, it doesn't have to be full sentences. What I'm personally looking for is when I'm writing something, let's say I knew that a slide had three bullet points or a question of a flashcard had three pieces to its answer. I'm gonna start writing it and I'm gonna find areas where I'm saying, ah, I know there's four, but I only know two. That's perfect. That's what you want. That's what the brain dump does. It helps you find the gaps in your knowledge. Every time I identify a gap, I quickly put a star or underline it or whatever, and I'm gonna do this for the rest of the lecture. Again, speed is the game. I'm gonna try to find as many gaps as possible. And then I'm gonna go back to my flashcards. I'm gonna go to my slides and say, oh, that was a bullet point that I was missing. I'm gonna write it in really quickly and I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna do it all over again. It's a very quick process. Sometimes it takes two to five minutes. You can do this on a whiteboard. You can do this out loud if you're not somebody who likes to write, but I like to do it on a piece of paper because I can't BS myself. If I can't write something down, even though I've convinced myself that I knew it, it's perfect system. But as I'm doing this over and over again, sometimes I can do two to three repetitions in the span of 20 minutes, because again, speed is the game. If I find myself writing something and I'm just like, yep, that's, I already know that's right, I'm gonna stop, move on to the next thing. But if I find myself having difficulty, boom, found a gap, start, and we'll come back to it later. And the end result of this after two to three passes is I feel super confident about this one lecture. If this was the test, you got it. And if you do this for every single class, you've nailed it. Now, if you're somebody who can plug in a second review or second pass of your material, I challenge you to actually do a brain dump before you go into your main study strategy. This way you'll be able to identify, okay, what did I forget for this lecture? Now you can do your Anki cards afterwards again, after you filled in your gaps, do your flashcards, 
and then come back to this once more. If you have that buffer day, a simple thing you can do is let's do a brain dump on every single lecture or lab that I have. And then after each lecture, I'm gonna go ahead and fill in my gaps, make sure that's a strength and do this for the duration of the lectures that I have. I'm gonna feel super confident going into that test. A really easy thing to do. I promise you, if you guys haven't tried it, it works wonders do have to schedule in the time to do so. And then tip number three is to feed in practice questions into your natural study strategy. So practice questions are great. Most students will use them, but they tend to use them too late. Often what I would do in medical school is instead of waiting till the last few days to start doing the questions from the review slides or practice questions from an extra resource that I had, I would just naturally fit in practice questions, even if it was a little bit at a time throughout my two weeks or three weeks of studying. So I may just do two or three questions here. On the weekends, I may do five to 10. The goal of it is not only just to do questions and get in the practice of being able to answer multiple choice questions, but if I make a mistake, which I made tons of, now I can change that and make it into a flashcard where I can put that into my Notion database or I can put that into my notebook. And now when I'm reviewing on a daily basis, not only am I reviewing the questions that come from the slides, but also from the material from practice questions that I've missed or guessed correctly on. This is a great way of building your foundation and material of making sure you don't make that same mistake going into test day. And again, most importantly, anxiety turns into confidence. Now, before we get into phase four, which is gonna be super critical for somebody who wants to make consistent A's and not to sporadically have good grades, I do ask that if you're finding this content helpful, the best thing that you can do to help this channel and help the community of students who are just like you is to hit that like button. I like to think that if you found this video helpful, Thus far, then there's going to be somebody out there that is struggling to study for exam, and this video may help them with just one small thing. So again, if you want to pay it forward, if you want to say thank you, or if you just found any value from this at all, the biggest thing that you can do for me and for the channel is to hit that like button. Now, this phase was born when I took the hardest exam that I've ever taken in medical school, which is step one. This is your first licensing exam that you take in your medical journey, and it's the most important because at that time when I was taking it, you would get one score. That score can really determine what kind of specialty and what kind of doctor you can be. So it was really stressful. Thankfully, it's pass fail now, it's still stressful, but that test was rough. You're studying for six, eight weeks to take one exam that's like eight hours long, and you just don't know how well you're gonna do. And I vividly remember taking that exam, having to use a restroom. So I went to take a break, looking myself in the mirror, and I just looked defeated. I knew at that time that that version of me was gonna do one or two things. He was either gonna completely mess it up and still screw up the remaining questions that he had to do and ruin it for me now, or he was gonna figure out a mental game to make sure that the questions that were left, he was gonna nail regardless of how poorly or well he did on the questions that he had already answered. Anxiety to confidence is one thing as we talked about in phase three, but you always want that sense of control. If you can feel a sense of control, even if the test is difficult or easy, you feel like, you know what, I got this. And here are three things you can do. Number one is to understand it is okay to schedule and readjust. Remember when we looked at our calendar, each specific task was like showing up for a personal appointment. You can move it around as much as you wish. The reason I like to use a visual calendar like Google Calendar or iCal is because I can visually see how practical my schedule is first of all, and if I need to make some changes, just like we did for physiology exam in that example that we had below. But also if I have a difficult day, life happens, procrastination happens. One of the exams and classes just takes much longer and goes into another task that I needed to do. You can move those appointments around and saying, okay, if I'm gonna move this physiology class now, that means I'm gonna to have to do more lectures this upcoming Saturday, but that's okay. I feel in sense of control despite what happened. It is completely okay to readjust, but you can only do so if you know what the rest of the plan is, which is why phase one is the first one and the most important. Tip two, and this is what I told myself in that mirror that one day, and I know it seems dramatic, but it made such a big difference. Focus on the points gained, not points lost. Every time you answer a question, you wanna think of it as this question is going to raise my grade. This is what you do when you take your practice questions, when you actually take the real exam. If it is a hard question, honestly, the funniest thing that I would tell myself is like, okay, you're gonna miss this anyways. I would put a star next to the question, I would mark it if I was taking a digital version. And in my head, if I got that right, it was a bonus. But every time I came to a question saying, I know what the answer is, I've studied my butt off, this question is going to be an easy one. It is a mental success. Cool, my grade just went up. I answered C, I know it's C. And then after answering the first question, I'm gonna go to the next one and saying, you know what? I feel pretty confident the answer is B here. Awesome, beautiful. I've answered two questions in a row, grade just went up. Now, if I get to the third question saying, shoot, whew, I don't even know what it's asking. Okay, well, I missed it. That's okay. I didn't lose the points. I just failed to gain them here. 
I'm gonna go to the next question and try to do so. If you could do it, it's a small difference, but now you're thinking of how your grade is improving throughout the duration of the exam versus going from 100 down to whatever score you're gonna ultimately get. It's basically your glass half full or half empty, but we're talking about are we filling the glass or are we taking water out at the very end? And that small change made such a big difference because each question, again, is an opportunity to improve your score. So if you don't know it, it's completely fine, but it won't let you affect what you'll do on the next question. Ideally, now the questions that you feel confident in, you get correctly, you don't let that stress and over anxiety get in your way. And then finally, tip three is to understand that the purpose of anxiety is to alert you, but to not overwhelm you. Most students will spend so much time saying, this test is going to be so important. I need to do well because if I don't, my average is gonna go down. My answer to them is pretty simple. I'm say, awesome, your anxiety has told you that this test is important. Let's make sure we implement all four phases to make sure you do as best as possible. But would you rather spend the 30, 40, 60 minutes that you are now being anxious about the exam or would you want to actually use that time to actually do the first lecture or get into your study strategy? Don't let your anxiety suck up time that you would love to be using to study and then cause more anxiety because you have less time to study. It's ironic that students will spend so much time being anxious of how little time is left that they spend so much time being anxious that they have even less time and then they become more anxious. It's just a death spiral. So use your anxiety to alert yourself, okay, it's important, what steps am I gonna take? and then actually get into them. Now, if you found those four phases helpful and having a plan for your next test or your next final and just getting your head straight, then all I ask in return is to hit that like button. But if you want more, I promise you this is not where it ends. If you go ahead and check out any of the links down below in the descriptions, you'll find some of our free resources like our medical school handbook, it talks about all the tips I would use as a student, not just how to study for exam, but all of them. That's absolutely free if you guys go ahead and click that below. If you're interested in working with us one-on-one -on -one, where we personally help you create a study system and a study strategy where you can go ahead and get the grades you want but not have to work as hard or as long, go ahead and definitely check out our, some of our coaching programs which I'll link down below. At the very least, you can click that link down below just to see the type of results our students have gotten so you can at least be inspired to improve your grades. Whether you work with us or not, it's completely up to you, but if you are interested, that'll be linked down below. But again, my friends, if you found this video helpful, go to this video right here on how to use Anki like a pro, as well as this video right here on all the study strategies that I used to get a 3.9 GPA in med school. Hopefully you found this video helpful. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on your journey. Thanks for being a part of mine. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.